with Behind the Bikini, uh, episode 23. And uh, yeah, so if you haven't done so already, I'm going to remember to do it right up front. Subscribe, like, comment, all of the fun things. Um, we do take all of your comments into consideration when we're looking at um, topics as well as answering questions. Maybe we'll pull up a few and answer some questions today at the end of this. Um, today, we're going to go over some, some massive don'ts <laughs> with posing. <laughs> so that's going to be our topic for today. Um, we've got illustrations and everything. We're going like high tech today. <laughs> yeah. We're taking it up a notch. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, we're going to demo it. So yeah. yeah um, along with uh, the, yeah, you're laughing at uh, trying Sean to take brought it. her stage out in a moment. Yeah. We're going to a stage up here. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's going to be like a big, a big magic show. You know, yeah. Not so much. So, but before we get into all of that, um, how is everything going with you? You're in Arizona right now, right? Yes, I'm not leaving here for a month. <laughs> You're like, I'm staying put. I'm not no leaving. Moving, no traveling. <laughs> no, we were talking about maybe going to the Arnold, and like the more I thought about it, I'm like, no, no. Yeah. Like, I'm not traveling right now. I don't want to yeah. travel till I have to. And I like made a boundary this year. Like, I traveled 32 weekends last year. I cannot do that as a human being, nor can my wallet. Yeah. So yes. I'm being very strategic this year, you know, with like my girls know where I'm going to be at. We already have the show roster picked and things like that. So I just, I love, I love being home right now. It feels so good to be in a routine. My training is out of this world. I am growing like a freaking weed right now. Love so it. everything's fantastic. Good. How about you? Well, I, opposite, I, I am going to be traveling. I'm not going to really announce a lot of it right now, but you know it. Yeah, I <laughs> I'm do. I'm going to be traveling again soon. I um, do. <laughs> uh, that's coming. All in due time. All in due time. Um, but also, I did just book, book all my stuff for the Arnold yesterday. So I already had my hotel and everything booked, but I didn't buy tickets because I haven't heard anything about if I'm going to be approved for media or not this year. So I'm sitting here like twiddling my thumbs. I'm watching the tickets like start to sell out. And I'm like, oh. What are you like, supposed right, to know? So, well, last year they didn't they didn't tell me until I remember it was like middle of February. So I was like, yeah, that's that's like, like that's pushing it. So that's I reached out close. a couple of times, but I haven't heard anything. Um, so I was like, well, screw it. I'm just going to buy tickets. And then worst case scenario, I'll just sell them. Sell you, know, them. If I, you know, if I do get approved from media, I'll sell them. So I went ahead and bought everything. So <laughs> again, I'm watching all the tickets like ticked out and they're like getting less and less and less. I'm and like, then you're screwed. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, the, the thing about the Arnold is you can usually buy tickets while you're there. Like, um, but I just didn't want to chance it, especially with wanting to report on everything and, and do commentary and all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm like, I don't want a chance that I have to like try and get a scalp ticket or something. You know what I mean? So are you, um, are you going to both days Friday and Saturday or just bikini? I, I'm going to decide that when I get there, I did buy for Saturday night finals. Um, last year I did everything again. I was a media last year, but it was a lot, you know, it was a lot to, to be during the expo and to be there Friday night for um, prejudging and stuff for the men, which I do enjoy, but at the same time, I don't report on prejudging. So it was an exhausting weekend last year. I'm just, yeah. just going to be honest. So I didn't buy tickets for Friday night, but I may, I may change my mind on that. Those the Friday night ones don't ever sell out because it's just men's prejudging that, that people go for really, you know, they have a lot of the other um, wellness too. prejudging. Yeah. They, well, okay. pre, uh, finals. So it's okay. finals. Prejudging okay. all takes place at the expo. It's just like the just like the Olympia. Olympia. Prejudging all takes place at the expo. They used to have prejudging in the Batillion Hall, whatever. It used to be separate, um, but they don't do that anymore. They do it in the expo now. So as long as you have your um, like your little VIP badge and stuff to go into prejudging, again, just like the the Olympia, then you're set. So I got that. I got Saturday night finals, and I'll decide on Friday. Um, that one, if I end up getting like tickets randomly, then I'll go kind of thing. Then you'll go. But, yeah. Yeah. But I, and I, I, cause I did do Spotify for it, but when you're talking about women's finals, they, they don't really do anything. They just do confirmation. Um, so, you know, if I'm going to pick and choose my spots, I'd rather use that time to like go train or something, you know what yeah. I mean? Versus yeah. burning myself out. Cause it's a long week. You know, you're there. I get in on Wednesday and don't leave until Sunday. And I typically, Oh, that drive. is a long week. Yeah. Why, why are you getting there on Wednesday? You have girls that you have to do makeup for. Well, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, they do the amateur portion on Thursday. I think it is. Okay. So, okay. um, I think I, I think I booked Wednesday. Oh my god, I don't even remember. I have to go look. I'm pretty sure I booked Wednesday. I hope I booked Wednesday. <laughs> but again, I drive. So, 
because I drive, like most of the time I drive. Um, so if I go up on Thursday, like I get in right before the athlete meet and greet on Thursday. So I like to go on the day before because again, it gets, it gives me a chance to settle, gives me a chance to train, gives me a chance to get in and see everybody. And again, the amateurs go and all that kind of stuff too. So I can take place or take part in that if I want to. Um, so how many athletes do you have in it this year for the amateurs? This year, this year, none. Oh, this good. Year, none. So you yeah. really can just enjoy right. and hang out. Good. Yeah. You're going to so, study. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Smart. Well, you know, we talk about this all the time. It's 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 an, an, an always educational. But uh, you know, since I started doing the show reviews and the Spotify and all that kind of stuff too, um, you know, I have to be on my game. You know this. I mean, we we do this podcast every week. And we have to be on for it. Like people don't realize when you're on and talking for hours at a time. It's 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 not easy. It's it's no, energy expenditure. We literally had to move our day back one day so we could prepare all the photos and stuff. Correct. That we're today, nobody puts that together. No, yeah. It's like, we don't, we don't just play. show up. Yeah. We don't yeah. just show up. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> there is a lot behind the podcast. <laughs> there is, exactly. So, you know, and that's, you know, that's, that's part of the show coverage too. It's like, I want to make sure that it's done right. I want to make sure that I research the competitors, that I have all their names. I have all their, their, you know, their background, all the stuff that they've done, all the shows that they've won so that when I'm on the live and when I'm doing the live uh, commentary, I can talk a little bit about them too. So it's not just about me going there and looking at them. I want to know their, their history and why they actually got yeah. accepted and all that kind of stuff too. So for yeah. those of you that have ever listened to my Spotify, I do talk about that. I talk about the titles that they want and things like that too. Or if you come on my lives, which those will be starting up again soon too, where I just go on live um, and start reviewing these shows and previewing these shows and stuff too. Cause those will be starting, those will be starting February, right? We've got a couple in February, I think. Yeah, um, we do. I have to look yeah. at the schedule, um, but those will be starting up the next, in the next week or so too. So Season is about to be underway. I know. People don't understand. I'm like, I don't just get on and go live for an hour. It's a couple hours of prep time, too. So, yeah. you know, all of that. But anyway, uh -huh. and plus, on top of that, I always go back to I'm a fan first, you know, and I enjoy the actual sport of bodybuilding first. Uh, so I enjoy being around it. I enjoy actually watching it from a fan perspective, too. So that would be my reasoning for going on Friday, really, if I end up going to Friday finals, because I like to watch the men, too. Right. So um, I like to see prejudging. It was it, it's it's interesting. Like a lot of the female division people that are involved don't realize that the men's um, open. They get judged both nights. You know, we kind of don't. You know, it's like that. They'll, they'll judge finals if they need to, if it's really tight and it's close, and they'll judge between the top five or something like that. For men, they all get judged both nights. Yeah. Um, and you can lose one night and win the next. So. You know, it's, it's fun to see that happen. And last year, it was a real battle between Andrew and Samson and and all of that. So, you know, it was it, – and, and Nick. And it was um, – you know, and it's interesting to see all that kind of stuff. And it's 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 fun to kind of have your own viewpoint, too, and say this person should have won or that person should have won or this person won Friday night, that person won Saturday night, whatever, that kind of thing. So from a fan perspective, I enjoy it, too, you know. Yeah, so, especially the guys because there yeah. is such fans from a, a day – and that's that's the whole point is like how how do they come back? Do they come back better? Do they come yeah. back worse? That's the same, but this guy came back better and he was winning last. It's it is really cool to see yeah. the men's side of it. Um, and again, I'm a fan too. I love watching the men's side of it because there's such variance when it goes yeah. from day to day with their divisions. And right with the bikini, it's like okay, they already have their decision made. Unless it's super super close, maybe they'll bring it back out and judge like you said the top five, top three. Mm -hmm. But that's where the men's side is very interesting to watch. Yep, and it does. You know, we talk about the Olympia setting the tone, but so does the Arnold. The Arnold sets the tone Absolutely. for the year. Yeah. So, you know, last year, again, was, was really cool watching that with the men because they had such different physiques. They had pretty physiques. Like me personally, I think that Andrew's Jack physique is, is amazing. And I wish that he was a little bit, a little bit more matured in the, in his uh, muscularity. Cause I think he would have won it at that point, but it was just like, that's the direction I like to see men's bodybuilding go. So, you know, I, I enjoy being a part of that as well. You know what I mean? So definitely, um, those are the kinds of things I enjoy as well. So it's not, it's not just about work for me. It's about having fun too. And it's about enjoying the actual sport. So there's that. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. So, you know, like I told you, going to the Arnold too, you get to train at the big, the, the powerhouse gym there and you get to be around all the big guys and all that kind of stuff too. It's very motivating. And, can, and again, it kicks your ear off on the, on the right foot. All right so, foot. Yeah. So, um, so that'll be, that'll be really my first big thing that I go to this year. There's not a whole lot going on in, in February. There's more personal stuff going on in February. You know what I mean? Um, but we do have a few, like I said, a couple of shows, I think that, that 
come out. I think there's like a Japan show and there's like one other show or something in February for Pearl Bikini, I think. And then March so, really starts picking up. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, looking at the schedule, I mean, it just, it's, it's pretty dense. We've talked, we talked about this a little bit. It's pretty dense with shows this year. So it's going to be crazy. Like, and just like you said, like, you know, I, I made this commitment to myself a couple of years ago because I started going to shows a lot and I was like, I have to pare it down to two shows a month and that's it. Two shows. That's still a lot. That's half the weekends of the month. I'm gone. Yeah. You know, that's still, that's still <clears throat> a lot. And people want me to go to this one and that one or whatever. I'm like, I, I can't go everywhere. I can't be everywhere. I can't come to every one of my clients shows. What do you mean? I'd You're like not to. Superwoman? <laughs> I know, right? Even though I'd like to, even though I'd like to be there for as much of it of as I course. possibly can. Of course. I, you know, I have other things I have to think about because if you go do that, then something else suffers, you know? So, you know, we talked about this with goals for the year. You've got to, you've got to, I was, the last few years I've been chasing a lot of rabbits and I'm paring down those rabbits to the ones that are really most important. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, you know, we just gotta, gotta think about that kind of thing. And then on top of that, just your own personal stuff too, your own personal life. We've talked about being there for your husband and all that kind of stuff too. yourself, you know? Um, yeah. I'm finally, like, I'm finally in a, like a good spot now. Like we talked about, like my husband went into surgery last week and things like that. And then like my, I had my check-in last week and I got my period and I was like, I was like, can I just have one, like one week check-in? <laughs> like, and then can... that's really the week in season where you're like, okay, well now I'm going to travel. So yeah. I was home the last two weeks when I had this and this happen couldn't be on track and now I'm leaving this week. So yeah, be on track. You know, and yep. what I mean by on track is like out of your routine, right? right? We are all so like married to our routines and our structures, yes. things like that. But that's why it's so hard when you're on the road, you don't have access to your kitchen. You don't have your, your gym. You don't have like, yep. you know, your things to have your schedule and it's hard. It's really, yep. really hard as a bodybuilder not to have those luxury tight situations for yourself yeah. that, that you feel comfortable enough to stick within your plan. Yep. And I said that to Jamie in my check-in last week. I was like, you know, my training this week was, it was good. It was there. I was like, but I just kind of, I'm just kind of doing it. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't, I, I'm not, I don't feel great about it, but I don't feel bad about it either. It's just kind of, just kind of meh. Cause that's, yeah. that's just where it was. You know, I didn't miss anything. I still trained everything. I still did all my cardio. I did all the things I, was, I ate all my food. You know, I did all the things I'm supposed to do. It just wasn't like rah, rah, like, yay yeah. kind of deal, you know? Yeah. And you know, even this week, like I, I'm getting back to, okay, this feels better now. You know, like I'm starting to feel like, okay, I feel like I'm pushing now. Like train glutes yesterday. I was like, oh, I was like, I got a really great booty pump. I was like, this is awesome. You know what I mean? Like I haven't, I haven't felt that in a while. And I was like, Good. okay, we're starting to get back to normal, like yeah. whatever normal might be, you know? Yep. Um, so I'm hoping I have check-ins tomorrow. I'm like, I'm hoping my check-ins tomorrow are pretty decent. I'm, I'm hoping. Hopefully. <laughs> I know, hey, right? <laughs> well, we, we do have to talk about before we get into our real subject, but yesterday CCTS tickets went on sale. They did. Yes, they did. I, had so, a, I woke up to a message from one of my clients. She was like, I've never been, I have no clue what I just signed up for, but because yeah. you and Sean so passionate about it. I bought my ticket yesterday and I was like, I love it. I think we're going to have such a party next year. Yeah. So, so, we, and so we opened up um, ticket sales yesterday to just our VIP list. So if you were on, ah, the, on the VIP list, then okay. you got the link and you and all that kind of stuff. If you were not on the list, you didn't get the link. Today, the link is going out to everybody. Okay. So, okay. Um, so Wednesday, we, today's Wednesday, the 31st. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And we sold over half of the ones we were putting available up yesterday. So, <laughs> and don't wait. Like I try to tell people this kind of stuff. I'm like, yes, I, I'm like, wait. stuff sells out. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not making this up. <laughs> like, like we, we sold, we sold most of them within like the first hour yesterday. Like as Dang. far as, you know, when, as soon as the, that link went out. So, um, we will, we will sell out of the super early bird. We sold out of the early bird. We will sell out of the super early bird. So, you know, and as it sits right now, what we're looking at as far as the participants for next year, we've already got just almost as many as we had total this, this past year for, for next year already. So, um, yeah, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. Heck yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to miss it. So anniversary um, year, yeah. 10 years, a That's decade. Right. We're 10 years. Big. And by and, we, you know, I mean Sean. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> well, the good thing about signing up now, as I've said before, is, you know, budget wise, it makes it very affordable because it's a monthly payment. You know, you've got almost a full year to pay it off. So it's not it's not something that you're going to be like, oh, ouch, when that comes out of your bank account each month. You know what I mean? Right. So, it's really, if you're if you're even questioning going, like it's silly not to 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 sign up for it now. Absolutely. You know, I mean, so. we've talked about it a hundred times, but it's it's not something we can explain. Yeah. I just I know that anybody I I can vouch like it's worth it's worth it. It's yes, absolutely. absolutely worth it. <laughs> you know, even if you only like make a relationship, a friendship out of it, it's huge. You can't Which put you well. Yeah. You can't put a money value on that because that's something no. that's going to support you throughout the year. You know what I mean? Like that. And if that's lifetime. The only, yeah. If that's the only thing that you get out of it, it's worth it. Absolutely. It's worth it. You know, you'll get okay. more out of it, but I'm just saying if that's the only thing you get out of it. Yes. Well, I, I just wanted to bring that up as we woke up to a message from my client this morning. And that's like awesome. I said, like she's a newer client of mine. We've been yeah. working together for six months and she was like, you guys are so passionate about it. I have no clue what I just signed up for, but I'm going next year. And I'm like, I love it. I love it. It's it's and it for me too, like just just selfishly planning an event, it's a lot easier for me to get excited about it when I know I have people coming. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know I, what get, I, mean? I, I get that. For like sure. I look at show promoters sometimes and I know for a lot of these show promoters, they don't get entries until mm. the people show up that day to sign up. I'm like, oh my God, that's got to be so like nerve wracking. Or a week before and the planning's already done. Yeah. And you're like, oh, maybe I should. I hope people show up. Right. Yeah, exactly. I hope people show exactly. I hope people sign up. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, no, and we don't do it like that. I mean, you obviously you've been there. I mean, it's, it's a full, like we have to give in advance Heck how many people we're, we're bringing you know what i mean because they, they do full banquets and stuff you can't you can't just whip up a banquet the day you of. cannot whip up this event this is not a whip <laughs> no. up event. It's, it's like it's like a wedding like you have to rsvp to a wedding it's it the is same 100% thing 100 like a wedding yeah absolutely yeah, it's the same that's thing. a great way so, to put it yep. yeah we, we've got to know how many how many heads to feed and all those kinds of things you know what i mean so but anyway um yeah the ticket sales went really well yesterday so good. very very happy so good if you're um if you're thinking about going don't miss out. That's Don't it. miss I out. Know, there's so many girls that when the when the event gets over with that year, they're like, like, oh man, I wish I'd gone. I hear that too a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do well, it now. This is yeah. this is your opportunity right now. You know? So, but anyway. But yeah, so so that's going well. Um, and it, well, obviously we'll have the ticket link in the description box below for uh, YouTube. Um, and Spotify too. I do put it on Spotify too in the description. Um what else? So physique wise and, and all that, like I said, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm finally getting to the point now where I'm like, okay, I'm kind of getting back on it. You know what I mean? I'm not just going through the motions. The last few weeks, it's just been kind of going through the motions, just getting it done. Um, this was the first full week where Dan actually cooked all of my meat for me. I put that up on my I stories. saw that. Yeah. And he was like, I did not realize how much you eat. I was like, yep. Yeah. He's like, he goes, I literally am feeding a football team here. I was like, yes. oh, it's just me. Yes. You you are a football team to make loops. <laughs> yep. That's right. Well, we always said, you know, we're, we're the no kids club, but we always said like, if we had kids, they'd be freaking athletes. Let me oh, tell you. For sure. <laughs> For sure. They'd be eating chicken and, and rice out of the womb. <laughs> well, because, you know, I mean, Dan was a wrestler and he played football and, and all that kind of stuff. So and then there's me, too, with this. I was like, man, they'd be they'd be one of two things that because Dan's also six foot two. So and I'm right. Five, nine. Right. He's tall. So, yeah. Yeah. So they'd either be supermodels or they'd be a athletes. So both. Was, one way or the other. Right. I know. Right. Maybe they, maybe they would be able to, to support us so we don't have. Right. <laughs> Man, if I could only just have a kid for like an hour, just like I know. what they would look like and be like, and then be like, poof, you're gone. I know, right? I'm like, oh, no kids man. club, sorry. That's I know. I tell people all the time, like, I love kids. Don't get me wrong, but I love yes. that I can give them back to their parents. At the exactly. End of the day. <laughs> like Drew, Drew's brother, his wife is pregnant. I am so excited to be an aunt. I'm like, yeah. you ship them off to me whenever. I will spoil yeah. them rotten, and then I will send them back to you. That's right. That's and the then best you, part. And then you got new parents got to deal with the consequences. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the best. I love being an auntie. I'll be an auntie yes. all day, but just and like, be able to send them. I kind of got into this on a, on a post the other day because it, you know, they're, they talk about how women, it was, it was a, one of these posts where women can't feel fully, fully fulfilled if they don't have children. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, so a couple of the biggest, the Personal. biggest arguments. Yeah. Some of the biggest arguments for having children are, um, 
you know, that you don't want to be alone when you're old. Like, well, there's, there's no guarantee that your kids are going to stick around. That's the first thing. So I know a lot of people who they don't even talk to their kids or parents or whatever. So there's no guarantee on that. And to think that the only way that you can contribute to society is by multiplying it's just not true. You know, there's so many people that have contributed and have fulfilling lives and have contributed to the betterment of society without having children. So Else, elsewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> ladies, if you want to have kids, great. Wonderful. I applaud you. If you don't, great. Wonderful. I applaud you. Absolutely. <laughs> there's, yes. There's plenty of, there's plenty of things. That, I mean, a lot of my girlfriends are moms, you know, obviously I have siblings and things like that too. And my sister has kids and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm good with being the cool aunt. Yeah. My best friend, she has a kid and he is the coolest kid around. His name's Jagger. And it's like, if I could guarantee that I would have a kid that cool I know, and, that, right? and that well-behaved, yeah, I would probably have a kid but you can't and knowing me it would not happen that way i mean i love her son her son is freaking awesome it goes back to her and their parenting style yes. and things like that but like i'm just too busy and you know it's just it wouldn't be fair it's not even fair for my dogs you I know, know? So right? like, how can i make a, a human life work in that like I don't know. It's yeah. Like, well, I say that all the time with I say that with Dan too because Dan was a hellion. He still is. Like he's a big kid. So if you if you he's an Aries and Aries are the are the kids of the zodiac. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Me too. So you never never grow up. And no. I'm a Virgo, which is the mother of the zodiac. So it's like he's like the little kid poking at the at the mom all the time. Mm-hmm. He's poking at me all the time. And um and I say it all the time. I mean he's 58 years old. I'm 59. And I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I just feel so bad for your mom. You must have been hell to raise. I'm like, he's like, yes, but she loved me. And you're like, like, oh God, now I'm in the same boat. Of course, I know, of course she loved you, but. Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah. They're like big kids. They are big kids. Yeah. For sure. So I just, I just laugh. I'm like, I can't imagine what you were like when you were 13. You know what I mean? Like, God, I was like, I can't imagine. God, like, when I was 13, that was my heck, heck year. Yeah. So maybe it's like, an Aries but, thing. It, it probably is. It probably yeah. is. He went into football. So his dad, he told me, he told me this story a thousand times. His dad took him to go watch a peewee football practice, right? Because Dan, he was getting into um, into trouble in school and fights and stuff. Dan was that kid. He wasn't a bully. He was the one that would defend the kids against the bullies. So he was the one that was beating the bullies up, but he was still getting into fights and stuff like that. Just aggressive and all of that. So his dad took him to watch a football game and, and his dad was like, would you like to play this sport? And he's like, you mean I get to pe- beat people up and not get in trouble? <laughs> he's like, yes, I would love this sport. Uh, sign me up. <laughs> so that started his it's football career. <laughs> that works perfect. Yep. Perfect. He's like, I get to let out my aggression and nobody's going to yell at me. Okay. Awesome. I love this. <laughs> so that's, Damn. that's my husband in a nutshell right there. <laughs> and and that's, what, that's what we would football have as children. For many years to come. Yes. Yep. That's right. Yep. And he went to, he went to college on a full wrestling scholarship, which. Oh, wow. If you know anything about wrestling, that doesn't happen. Like yeah. wrestling is not a revenue generating sport kind of thing. Um, so and there's but, really nowhere to go. Yeah. after college for it yeah you know so he, he did play football as well um okay. at, the, at the collegiate level but he got a full ride for um for, for wrestling, wrestling. Mm-hmm. wow that's awesome yeah i yeah, didn't know was, that that's really cool yeah he was like he went to um the black games which is like what they do in between olympic years so it wasn't the olympics but it's like the same caliber athletes and um he ended up winning a silver medal in the black games like he went i think he I can't remember exactly where he went, but it was, it was a pretty big deal. So wow. he's really, he was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Dang. See, mm-hmm. you guys should have kids. You guys would have maybe an Olympic athlete. I know. Right. I'm thinking that in, my, in the back of my head. I'm like, selfishly. Yeah. Now, <laughs> like, that I'm, now that I'm saying it out loud, this might know. be a good I'm idea. Like, maybe they could have been in the NFL or the, N- the NBA. Um, I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, there's my retirement plan. Maybe right this there. is my retirement plan. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh god Uh-oh, look at look at me and sean now we're gonna have kids now we're gonna like go home tonight and be like okay now we need to make babies i know right we changed our mind. Like, i changed my mind I, I need a solid 401k <laughs> and then our husbands are gonna be like okay no more podcasts you guys are done <laughs> i know uh, oh goodness gracious okay sorry uh anyway so that little tangent um uh yeah so 
Yep, off season's going great over here as far as that's concerned. I mean, I think my body composition is pretty good. I think my my I don't I'm not like starving anymore, which is a good thing. Like all my good. all my hunger levels have, have leveled back out. I am still doing a, an untracked meal every week, um, just because I like to, to have that freedom to go out and have like a date night or something like that. I went out with my girlfriend for you know dinner the other night, that kind of thing. So. But I don't do anything crazy. Like when we were out, I had fish. You know what I mean. So it wasn't like I was. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So I didn't just didn't weigh it, measure it, and things like that. You know, fish and salad and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, so that part's going fine, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm teetering on this this concept of when I want to prep again. You know what I mean? Like I kind of want to do it this summer, but at the same time, like I, like I've always told you, like I want to get on stage when I'm going to be better. And I know I still need to grow my legs. So I'm like, I, I, you know, I'm like, now that I'm switching over to, to competing in masters, I'm like, I feel like I could win with my current physique, but it's not always about winning. It's about being better. So I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm in this Teeter. spot. Yeah. I'm in this spot of, do I want to prep again or do I want to <clears> just grow some more? So I'll, I'll figure that out in the next. Because the next to be months. fair, I mean, now is really the time that you're going to start growing. Right. Now that food is up, Correct. stress is a little bit lower. Now that CCTS right. is over, obviously you yep. weren't expecting Dan and his surgery and things like yep. that. So now is really where you could capitalize on growing now that food's a bit yes. higher and things like that. So yeah, it's that's a hard. And also, place. I mean, blood and hormone levels and stuff like that too. People don't realize like you don't go back to normal automatically when you get out of a prep. It it can take a few months. It can take, you know, three, four months, five, six months for your blood work to go back to normal. You know, I'm going to retest my blood work again in March um, <clears throat> and just see where I am in comparison to where I was when I had it done post prep. But, you know, that's something you have to think about. Like if your hormone levels aren't even normal yet, like you can't optimize them. You know what I mean? No. Like, you, you got to give your body a chance to, to catch up. And again, right. the older, you can't the older grow you get, till your sex hormones are back online. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. you know, while I feel like, I feel like things are going in the right direction, that doesn't, why am I going to cut it off so quick? You know? So I say to my team all the time, you know, your body's wanting to grow right now. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you're wanting to grow, don't cut that off and start going into a cutting phase. It's only going to make the cut harder, right? Because right. your body's in the mode of grow, grow, grow. And you're like, nope, let's switch gears. And number two, I mean, if your body wants to grow and you need the growth, then just hang there. So right. You can't find it anymore. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. So that's so, it is. It's a hard choice. Super, super yeah. hard choice. So and as take it when we get a time right now and see how yeah. your body responds. I mean, it's it is still so soon in the season. It is. It is. And like I've seen that a lot now too on like you know, I go in the Facebook groups and stuff like that where girls just got done with the, with the competition in November and now they're cutting again. I'm like, you're not gonna you're not gonna be any better. If anything, you're going to be worse. Exactly. You're not going to make if anything. anything you're going to be worse. Right. You know, like, you, you and it's realize. And mental thing, too. Yeah. There is such thing as taking a mental break, too, from yeah. bodybuilding. And not yep. in terms of, like, day-to-day. -day. Like, obviously, everybody, you know, should stay on, like, nutrient-dense, whole foods. But taking that mental break of having that one night a week to go on date yep. night with your husband right. or girlfriends or all the things that you usually say no to, you say yes to. Like, mm -hmm. there is a science behind the mental break as well in bodybuilding Absolutely. because that's where people get burnt out and have horrible reverses or never come back to the sport because they don't take those breaks in time. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. You know, people, people under, underestimate the mental aspect of it. Like you said, you know, and it's a huge part of bodybuilding. Yep. And as we were, we were talking about before, just the, like, before we got out live, I was complaining about my, my, my vein and my, <laughs> my face. I feel like, like, like this just gets worse over time and there's like nothing you can do about it. Like we were talking about like our faces filling back out and stuff now that we, that we put on some weight and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, why isn't this vein going away then? <laughs> I'm like, my face exactly. is filling out. Why is this vein still here? It's annoying. Like I went to go, I had a, I was saying, I was, I had a consultation about it to try to, to get it filled or whatever. And they were like, well, we can fill it, put it around there. But when your face fills out, then the filler is going to fill out too. And you're going to have like a lump on your your You're head. like, no, we don't and want like, that either. I'm like, you trade one problem for another. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like, you know, so I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. It's like and then I was just telling Sean that I got my Botox. Sorry, I have coffee delivery. Um, I got my Botox <laughs> like two weeks ago and it's like starting to settle in. And then yeah. like my face is moving and stuff and my cheeks feel like they're in my eyes. And I'm like, is this normal? <laughs> What's going on right now? I'm like, I've gotten less and less. I've been doing less and less Botox. Um. 
because I don't, A, when you do it for a long period of time, your, 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 your face actually stops moving. That's the whole point. Like, I know. The, you know, the what point of, the, well, the point, the point of Botox is it freezes your face. It freezes your muscle. So it can't move so that hopefully over time, you kind of train your face to not move as much. <laughs> so the, I used to get Botox all over my forehead, my eyes, my 11, everything. Right. Well, now I only really get touched up in my forehead and under in my crow's feet. I've stayed away from the, the, the 11 lines. I feel like a lot of my expressions come from this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when that's not there, I feel like it looks a little weird. So, yeah. So, but I also find myself in the gym, like, because when you concentrate really hard on lifting, you're like, I'm like, oh, wait, don't, that's, that's your face. <laughs> I know. I, I notice how much my face moves too. Like, especially yeah. when I'm training and I'm like, yeah. you know, yeah. That, yeah. And I'm yeah, like, they even talk I think about I that. I'm ruining my Botox right now. Yeah, they talk about it with like power lifters and stuff. Like, they're some of the worst ones when it comes to um, yep. running, running through Botox so quickly mm -hmm. because they're, they're just straining so much with their face. So, Drew <laughs> like, used to do power lifting, and I used to go in there a couple times just to watch them train, and I'm like, I mean, they, their face and their yeah. neck veins. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. That's a tangent. Sorry. So ladies, if you want to minimize your Botox need, minimize your facial movements. Just when you're lifting, just look straight ahead. <laughs> yeah. And keep your face It doesn't face hurt relaxed. at all. It doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> no burning. None. No, no grunting, no moving your face, no facial expressions. You're not allowed. Oh my God. The things we Tips from Sean and Jordan. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, but anyway, so those are the things going on in life. So let's let, let's move into our topic today, which is going to be posing do's and don'ts. Um, okay. So we'll start with some individual poses, and then we'll move on to some comparison do's and don'ts. Um, we haven't really dove into this too much with the podcast. So I thought this was a, a good idea to kind of to go through this. So we actually have photos and everything that we're going to share with you guys. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. No one make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to do the poses wrong. It is. It's hard really to do it wrong. Hard. It is. It's really hard. Now, let me see. Uh, we were messing with this before, and I've switched over to the different tab. So let me switch back to your, your don'ts tab. There we go. So we'll start with the this one. Ta-da! Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> This is Jordan, if you didn't this know. Is me. So, yeah. <laughs> so tell Love us a little me. bit about what's going on here and why it's a don't. All right. So uh, this is called the teapot arm. So there is a fine line between opening up the arm so that you could see a little bit of lat and seeing a little bit of glute and things like that. But what we don't want to see is what this looks incomplete to me, basically, right? It kind of looks like you're wanting to hold something. And yep. this is on NPC News Online. If you look at the bikini standards that they do not want this. So that is that right. front arm kind of holding out to the side, almost looking like you want to hold something. Um, it just looks, like I said, very incomplete. And you have to think too, there's going to be a girl next to you and how rude to kind of put yourself in their space. So that arm yeah. should be nice and relaxed down by the side. And we're going to talk about on the next one, I believe, being too close to the glute. Yeah. So the teapot arm too, it's funny because um, I, uh, I'm i the person that came up with this, by the way, <laughs> as far as I'm a little teapot. On, my, yep. on, my on one of my lives, I showed the little, this, don't do this kind of thing. Yep. And then it, it caught on. So that was me, you guys. I'm the one that came up with the, with the name. This is the teapot. <laughs> they coined it. <laughs> I did not come up with the pose. I did not come up with the problem. Where this came from is it actually came from one posing coach who taught all their clients to do this. And the reason why they wanted them to do this was to show more bicep. Well, as we know, in bikini, we don't care about biceps. <laughs> <laughs> so it all started spawning just from this one person telling people to do this. And then everybody else saw other people doing it on stage and started picking it up and doing it, blah, blah, blah. Um, I can remember specifically being at Masters Nationals. This was a few years back. And, um, and Sandy just getting completely frustrated by seeing this all over the place. She's like, we don't care. And she used some ex expletives <laughs> about your biceps, <laughs> you know? So yeah. Um, just because one person does something like this does not mean that it is something they want to see, right? Correct. So it got so bad that they actually put it up, like you said, on NPC News Online as a don't do this, right? It actually d 
detracts from what they're looking for, which is the roundness of the shoulder and that V into the lat. Like you said, it just looks incomplete. It almost looks like you're in a transition position. You're not Correct. in an actual pose. Right. Correct. And so. I think too, like, you know, and, and for this reason specifically, you know, it's very hard because girls will hire a posing coach and their posing coach is the one that does this. Yeah. And I feel like people get so caught up coaches in particular about reinventing the wheel or like creating uh -huh. something new and it's not yes. actually correct. Right. Um, here's an example of this, right? This person was trying to create a new shape or a new thing and like coin it and they hated it. And not that biceps are not directly graded They're They should be proportional to the shoulder, but they're not supposed to be like showing or like in this pose, my eye goes right to my bicep yep, and that's absolutely. not what's graded in bikini. So that would be distracting to the judges or distracting to that eye. And the other thing I look at too, is your vascularity. You have, you have veins in your, in your biceps and you have veins in your, in your forearms. And that's not something they want to see. They actually work down for vascularity. That. They hate that. Yep. So, you know, you don't, and I know for me, I, all my vascularity is right here. So if I was to do this position, that's exactly what you'd see. You know? Absolutely. And that's why, like, you when I'm see, in, mine too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I'm in, when I'm in the gym and doing selfies, I do selfies like that because you can see all that. It's cool. To look at right. a selfie, but they don't want that on stage. So no, that has been part of my feedback too, is that they hate my vascularity yeah. and it's, that's what happens when my fats are low, but you know, mm -hmm. you got to hide it. You got to hide it within your posing. That is something I worked on last year after that feedback. So there's that one. Let's go on to the next one. So this is the too much. Yeah. So you could see here now the arm is straight, but now I'm covering glute. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the front pose, you're supposed to see that balance, that beautiful balance from top to bottom. And here now my upper body looks too big because yeah. I'm covering my glute shape with the front arm. So again, it's that fine line of letting the arm be straight down and looking effortless, but also being mindful of where it's positioned because you don't want to cover that glute shape in that front pose. Yeah. And you lose the S curve. Um, Again, going back to this actually was an okay pose um, eight years ago, something like that. Uh, but that was before we went through the whole Issa time frame where Issa made everything really wide. So but prior to her, everything was a little bit more narrow. All of the upper body stuff was a little bit more narrow. Um, they were looking for more uh, lower body versus upper body. Then we went through the Issa era where everybody was doing these big, huge lat flares and all that kind of stuff. And they're like, no, we don't want that either. You know, we want to see the S curve. We don't want an X. X is, is you know, figure, bodybuilding, all that kind of stuff, right? We're getting X or actually it's a Y for figure. But um, <clears throat> we don't want all that. We want the S. So you're right. When you cover up the glute like this, you lose that S. You lose that curve through there. We don't see the curve into the waistline. It makes you look blocky. Makes yes. you look straight up and down. Makes straight you up and down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make you look like you've got the curve. So there's a fine line balance between looking straight and looking like an X frame. We don't want the X in bikini. We want the S. So right. just opening it up a little bit so that we can see that 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 shape. They don't want to see a flare. They just want to see shape is, is important. So we don't lose the glute too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that one. Let's move on to the next one, which is. Oh, God, I hate this one. <laughs> See, up. Yeah, nobody looks good straight on. No yeah. one. No one yeah. looks good straight on. You know, you have to think when you pose for just a regular photo, right? Uh -huh. You don't just stand straight on. You're trying to turn your hips and you have, yep. you know. So anyway, yes, this is hips two square. So this is where both hips are pointed towards the judging panel. Once again, this is just throwing off shape. You look kind of straight yes. up and down. There's nothing interesting here. And the number one thing that people or judges were saying last year when we were getting feedback is that they want this S curve, which is that mm. line from the lat into the waist, from the waist out to the glute. We don't have any of that here. There's no, no shape here. This is not interesting. This is not pretty. This does not show any kind of shape that I have or muscle. So you should be twisting those hips away from the judges and everybody's different in how far to twist. That's something mm -hmm. that you need to work with your coach or your posing coach on. Some people need their belly button completely to the side. Some people need it slightly toward the front. What you don't want to do is over rotating, which we're going to talk about in a, in a minute. Um, but yes, please, if, if you learn anything from this podcast, twist the waist. Yes. And if you cannot do it, it's because your mobility sucks. So right. start working on stretching and getting on a yoga wheel or getting body work done. Posing is supposed to hurt if it's done correctly. That's why you're supposed to practice and practice holding them as well. Yep. And then the other thing too, you said this a few times, there's no shape here. If you ever watch like <clears throat> runway models, supermodels, things like that, 
a lot of them pose straight on. And the reason why, when you're a model, your job is to be a coat hanger. Your job is to show them the clothes. Yeah, your job is not to show your body. Your job is to show the clothes. So if you think about it this way, it's the exact opposite. You're trying to show your body. You're trying to show Mm. your shape. You're not trying to show your your outfit or your or your bikini or whatever on stage. You're trying to show you, right? Uh, If (laughs) I think if we could go on stage with nothing on and just show the physique shape, that that would be preferable. But obviously, that would not be okay. (laughs) But I'm just saying it's the complete opposite of being a a model, right? So you got to remember you have to be comfortable with also showing your shape. And this, like you said, doesn't show your shape at all. So just think about it that way. If you have a hard time connecting with it. This is making you look like you're a model and a coat hanger versus versus you want to show the shape that you're actually building in the gym. This is bodybuilding. This is not fashion modeling. This is bodybuilding, right? It's a good way to point it. Yep. Yeah, two different yeah, things. Um, next one. This one is really hard because I actually look best when my hips are turned away, but I think I needed to crank actually a little bit more in this one to really show it. But basically Mm -hmm. what I'm trying to show is that if that belly button is almost twisted away from the judges, it should be pointed toward the side of the stage. But if you're twisting more towards the back corner of the stage, now you're just going to be minimizing the upper body and you're going to be showing way too much glute. Um, So again, just creating an imbalance from top to bottom. So again, it's just about finding finding what direction of the hips looks best on you. And that's just going to come. Excuse me. <laughs> that's just going to come. put their two cents in. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> that's just going to come from a really good posing coach or your coach that knows how to pose you. Yeah. Well, the, the hard part about this one is because you look at this, you're like, oh, your glutes look so good. It's like, yeah, but the rest of the body fades away. Right. Again, we look, we look at these, these poses and it should be showing your shape. Just like we talked about that whole last pose. You want to show your full shape. This is like, bam, look at her glutes. Right. Right. That's not bikini. Used to be, used to be years ago. It was not anymore. Um, And the other thing too, is your waistline in this particular pose doesn't look its best either. It looks looks wide. It looks wide. You know, there's a fine line balance making that waistline look its smallest and twisting all the way to the side does not do that because what you end up getting is you end up getting the width of your rib cage and then it just becomes a block versus being that shape. So again, it's finding that balance. And we always talk about um, having like the towel and doing the the push pull. So your hips should be going this way. Your upper body should be going this way. And if you're doing that, you can only uh, torque it so far. You know what I mean? And if you don't feel that, that pull, push, pull, that means you're pushing too far one way. You know, this probably is more comfortable than, than an actual front pose, right? Because you're right. not twisting, you're not twisting as Twisting much. the upper body. Yeah. Yeah. So what you can notice here too, which is wrong, is that the back elbow and the back knee are pointed toward the back yeah. corner of this stage. So you should be slightly twisting both of those forwards that you're posing them towards the judging panel. So that's also why the upper body, especially that back shoulder looks like it's, it's not there because I'm not posing it towards the judges. That's right. That's right. So again, going back to the same thing we talked about with the last pose, you're looking for overall shape and this just doesn't accentuate your overall shape. It just shows your glutes. That's all it does. That's all it does. Yep. So. Oh God. (laughs) Hey, listen, I was doing this one last, uh, this last season trying to get my mobility, but you, you a lot of people one. do. A <laughs> yep. lot of people do. And be, yep. it's because there, there's two, I guess to me, there's two main reasons why this happens. I'm sure Sean, you'll have more. Um, this is, this is highly exaggerated. Okay. But so there, there are some people that do this, but if you look at your photos and if you ever look like you are leaning forward or backward, something's wrong. It, it shouldn't yeah. look like that. You should look very up and poised and straight up and down. Um, So where I see this happen the most is where girls are trying to push their glute out Mm -hmm. because they're trying to create a shape that's maybe not there or they don't know how to arch the glutes Mm -hmm. or they have too much pressure on that back toe. So there should only be about five to 10% pressure on that back toe. 90% of your body weight should be on the front leg. So if you have too much pressure in that back toe, you're naturally gonna lean toward that side. So try to think about 90% pressure on your front leg, only 10% on that back toe, and think about pushing that back toe down. And I always say hook in the sternum. So pull your sternum up, chest is up nice and tall. What's the universal sign of confidence? Chest up, chin up, head up. Everything is up nice and tall. I When you look at your photos, your shoulder should be stacked directly over your glutes. Yep. And then how you get the glute shape is by tilting the hips back towards your ponytail. Yep. 
you know, and, and for me, the reason why this was happening is what you just said. I was trying to get my glutes to pop. So with my front pose, um, my, my strong side of my front pose, I don't have as good of a glute pop. So I was using this to try to push and pull that mobility and get it to push a little bit further. And Jamie would correct me in my check-ins. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know I'm bending over. <laughs> I was like, I know. I'm like, I know I'm doing that. I'm like, I'm just I'm trying to push that further. I won't eventually. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what it was. I was like, I'm trying to push my mobility further. And, you know, by the time I got to stage, I wasn't doing it anymore. I wasn't pushing like that. But I was able to kind of loosen up my hips a little bit more by, by training myself, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but you see that you do see this a lot where people are just trying to push that glute so much that they lose track of everything else going on with their body. And like you were saying with that back foot, um, I talk about when I'm, when I'm posing somebody, a lot of times they don't realize how much weight they're putting on the back foot. So I tell them, I say, listen, so for, for you, if you're standing here with your, your right foot on the ground, left foot in the back, I said, pick your left foot up off, off the ground. Can you hold your pose with your left foot up off the ground? If you're standing like this, you can't. No, you can't. You can't. So if mm -hmm. you can't hold your front pose on just that front foot, you've got too much weight on your back foot. That's so it. you should be able to pick it up off the ground and still hold the pose. Yes. So if you I can't love do that. that, that's yeah. a really good, that's a really good tool to, when you're, yeah. when you're practicing your pose. I do it all the time with my clients because nine times out of 10, they don't realize that they're doing it. Nine times exactly. out of 10, they don't realize that they're putting that much weight on, on the back. And I'm exactly. like, you know, if you can't, if you're at home and you're practicing and you can't pick that foot up off the ground, you know, you're putting too much weight on it. I like that. I'm going to use that. Yep. Well, there you go. You, you learned a little something Thanks. today. <laughs> no problem. You know, always helping each other out here. Oh, oh, always. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this one. one I don't understand at all. <sighs> I know. <laughs> I I honestly don't know why someone would do this pose because it does nothing for you. Yeah. I see it though too often. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously here you have no glutes. I call this the Urkel. But I mean, like tucking your hips under. I mean, that is this is the, <laughs> this is the exact opposite of what we want in bikini. Yes. So literally, you're driving those hips forward. You're leaning so far backward. I couldn't tell you, like I said, why someone would choose to do this. But again, we do see it. And obviously yes. you see the shoulders are not directly stacked over the glutes. You guys obviously have seen my glute shape in the last four photos. That is completely gone. So yeah. it is about finding that that curvature of the spine. So like I said, tilting the pelvis back and then the hook in the sternum. So everything is should be up straight, nice and tall. And I have a theory um, All right. where, this, where this comes from. Okay, I think it comes from figure posing. Uh -huh. Because okay. a lot of times in the in the quarter turns on figure girls, they do push forward in order to get that V shape okay. into the upper body. And remember, okay. we said this earlier, figure girls have the martini glass, so they have the Y shape up top. So they're pushing forward to make that, that waistline super tight and, and V out that uh, rib cage and lat and everything in the back. So I think, and I don't know, but I think that this probably has trickled down from probably some figure girls posing some bikini girls. Those bikini girls started posing more bikini girls and so on and so forth. If I had to guess, I'm guessing that's where it came from. Hey, um, your guess is better than mine. And that at least gives me some sort of explanation to this pose. I'm like, yeah. but I am seeing it more and more and I don't understand it because you're right. It doesn't, it's Do not bikini. Anything. It's yeah. not bikini. So this goes back to making sure that you're getting a coach that understands the division as well and understands the criteria. If you're posing with somebody who is a figure posing coach and they're posing you for bikini and they don't actually really pose bikini girls, you might want to pick somebody else to pose you. you Good know? point. Yeah. So I, I, that's just my theory. I, again, I don't know, but that's the only place that I can see this pose having merit is when they're in quarter turns for figure. Mm. So okay. That's my, that's my, my thought. Somebody, some, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, oops, I didn't mean to, didn't mean to do that. I just unshared it. Hi. <laughs> no, <right? laughs> there we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> um, okay. And then back foot. There you go. And there's that one. Yeah. I see this one a lot. Um, especially mm -hmm. when I'm posing a new competitor, mm -hmm. I will tell them, and I, I don't know, Sean, maybe you have a better thing. I always tell, tell people when I'm posing them big toe down to the floor and they're like, what? It, yeah. it, it doesn't register. So yeah. that foot, it looks like we're going shopping. It's like, Hey babe, want to go shopping? It's like, it's just very, again, incomplete and <laughs> yep. it doesn't give again, any shape, right? If you look at the top, we have that back elbow that's pointed. It's on the back arm and it's mm -hmm. going, you know, away. And then you go down to the leg. And if you have the toe down to the ground with the knee bent, it just makes it look very complete and a nice silhouette to the physique. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So yeah, it should be big toe down to the ground. And I tell people like, I'll pick up my shoe and I'll point to the top of the shoe and I'm like, top of the shoe down to the floor like this. Yes. Like, yep. and it's really funny because Drew and I are doing a lot of assessments right now with competitors for training and stuff. And we're noticing that on the back leg, a lot of girls have calf tightness mm -hmm. and we're yes. like all the bikini competitors, because if you, you know, pros, we know how to do this. We put our big toe down to the ground and we have that calf spiked all the time in that tightness. Yep. So mm -hmm. you should be feeling a calf tightness if you have this pose correctly. But I see this way too often. What do, what do you think about this or how do you kind of coach girls into this one? So again, with this one, this one used to be okay. This one right. used to be, um, you know, again, we're talking five, eight years ago where girls were using this, right? Um, I think even Courtney King did it when she, when she won the Olympia, you know? Um, this for me is a lesser of two evils. And the reason why I say that is because I do have a couple of girls that I pose like this. Okay. And, and the reason why is because they do the previous slide where they push too much weight onto the back foot. So they're not able to get the weight up onto the front foot. This is typically a mobility issue. This is something where they can't get all their weight up onto the front foot. And no matter what we do, if they try to put the weight onto that back, uh, onto the front foot, they end up pushing weight onto the back toe and they end up bending over. So I'll have them put their foot flat on the ground and that gives them a more stable base so they can push forward. Mm. But again, it's a lesser of two evils, right? We only do that if they can't stand up straight with their front foot and all the weight on that front foot. So where I think this, this has merit is in a situation like this, because I would sure. rather see this than somebody bending over, right? Yes. This is, this is the lesser of the two evils, yes. right? Yep. But the goal, like you said, the goal is to get that toe up. We always want to get that toe up. So what I think happens is, again, we probably have some girls that have to do it this way because they have the mobility issues, things like that. And then other girls see it and they copy it. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's how everything works. And this is, again, goes back to why you have to have a good posing coach, because you know, if I saw this and I saw your pose and I saw you posing like this, me personally, I'd say you need to put your weight up on that front, on that back toe, right? But your posing coach might know that you can't do that without fucking up the rest of your pose. Correct. <laughs> right? Right. So this, this goes back to, uh, you know, this is across the board when it comes to anything you do as a competitor. There's going to be certain things that you're going to get feedback on that they don't know what you look like in another position. They Specifically. Don't know what you look like. Correct. So you may look 10 times worse when you do it the way that they think you should be doing it, right? Absolutely. So, you know, it goes back to, I would rather see this pose than the bent over pose. But at the end of the day, we want to get you to the point where you have the toe up, we have everything perfect. That's what we want. That's that's yeah. where we're that's where we're going to, right? I agree with that. I agree so with that. I think that's where this, this one comes from more than anything else. It probably just comes from people watching other people doing it and they're thinking that's what they're supposed to do. So, yes. Yeah. That's, it's the monkey see monkey do. <laughs> yeah. Try not to look at posing from two years ago, three years oh, ago. Before we move on to the, to the back pose, let's look at the front, the front pose correctly. There's the front, the correct front pose right there. That's correct. This is the ideal, right? Yep. So why is this the ideal? Well, front arm, as we talked about in the very beginning. So it's looking like it's relaxed, but it's not covering the glute. It's also not out looking like you're wanting to grab something or what I call holding the dog leash where it's pulling you. So mm -hmm. it just looks effortless. Uh, backhand is on the hip, el elbows pointed towards us. So we see that back shoulder. I could do a little bit of a better job on the back foot of coming more to the big toe and uh, pulling the knee inward towards us. I was going to say that. Yep. A little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm yep. tilting my pelvis backward. There's no leaning up or, or forward or backward. And also I look like I'm straight up and down. Yes. So everything from top to bottom looks very balanced here. Uh, we see the S curve, right? So if we're noticing, Sean, maybe you can use your pointer to do the S curve from the lat into the waist and then the waist out to the glute. That's that S right curve here. that the judges keep. Yep. That the yep, judges right keep here. asking for right now. Um, so everything here in this front pose is, is pretty balanced and what the mm -hmm. judges have been asking for. Yep. And like you said, as far as balance is concerned, I agree with you on the back, the back toe and the back knee that you're talking about. But if you look at where your toe is right here, it's directly underneath your shoulder in the back. So that's good. I would just probably pull it forward a little bit and push the knee forward a little bit. And yep. that would also put you in line a little bit better with this hip going back a little bit more, because what I'd like to also see is I'd like to see a line that goes directly from the outside of your delt, comes straight down and hits the outside of your glutes. So I think just that one little adjustment that you mentioned would actually do that with the whole frame. Um, and that will put you in perfect balance. And then the other thing you got to think about too, is when we're talking about off season look versus on season look, sometimes you can't pose yourself perfectly in the off season because you're going to look different once you diet it down. 
Yeah. You know, so um, I tell people all the time when you're in the off season, you want to get the basics. You want to get the, the overall shape, the overall look. You want to get the, the transitions down, all those kinds of things so that you're comfortable with those. So that once you're in season and you're actually going towards your show, you can adjust based on how your body starts to lean out. Yeah. You know, if you're, if your shape on the top starts coming down a little bit, then we got to adjust you so that you look a little bit, a little bit bigger up top or vice versa. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Um, so as long as you've got everything and like you said, I mean, you critiqued your own pose sitting here, you know what I mean? So like, it's never going to be perfect and that's okay. Uh, but we, we want, never. The, we want the base to be solid, which it is. You're, you're, you've got a solid base here. And I, like I said, I, if I just took your toe and your knee and pushed it forward towards us a little bit more, I think that would put this in a perfect alignment. Yeah, for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> got the seal of approval. You got the, you got the stamp of approval right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, phew. okay, yep. pass the test for today. Good. Okay, so let's move on to the back poses. Okay. Um, so here we got your upper body pinching and squeezing. So let's talk a little bit about that one. Yeah, so back pose, what are we looking at? We want to see, obviously, rear delts, and we do want to see balance from top to bottom. So um, here, when I'm pinching, so where the pinch is coming from is in between the shoulder blades, so the rhomboids. So what we actually want to do is keep the shoulder blades open in a back pose. Um, we can cue this a couple of different ways. Everybody's different in how much they need to rotate, things like that. But one thing that we say is squeezing the chest. So try to squeeze the chest, which will open up the back. Um, some people squeeze the chest and they still just can't quite get it. So then we talk about kind of talking about rolling the shoulders forward a little bit. That's, that is, you know, different person to person because yeah. that elevates their traps or it makes them look too wide up top. So there is a balance that you have to try to find. Um, but in this one specifically, I am kind of really cranking those elbows back. I'm really pushing the shoulder blades together. And you see this a lot when girls go to push their glutes in their back pose. So they mm -hmm. go to push the glutes and then they feel like they have to also push the upper body. Yes. Um, Plus, you want to talk about, too, about not pushing the glutes too far up. Once again, you should be tilting the glutes up and then a slight pushback, but you shouldn't have to over push. That's only going to square the glutes more um, and create an imbalance from top to bottom. So it's finding that, that balance of opening the shoulder blades, opening the elbows a little bit and creating that lat width so that the waist looks nice and small. You also see here that now that I decrease my lat, my lat size, my lats to my waist look straight up and down. Mm -hmm. yep. no shape. No so if I yep. open up my back, my lats are going to come out, which is going to make the illusion that my waist is smaller. Yes. Um, and that's a, that's, I think the biggest thing that we see this happen with is what you just mentioned with the girls pushing, you know, it's not a push in the back pose. It's a tilt up. So I always tell about, talk about thinking about like you have a string attached to the top of your glutes, pulling you straight up versus pushing you backwards. Correct. Right. Yes. So a lot of times girls try to push backwards and that's where you get this. Um, yes. Sometimes too, this comes from, they want to show more delt and they think if they pull their, their elbows in a little bit, it's going to show more delt. It doesn't work. I have um, great rear delts. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very hard on myself. So to say that, but I have really great rear delts and you can't see them at all here. All yeah. I see is shoulder pinching and yeah. 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 So actually one of the things that I have, I'll do it since I'm, I'm right here, you guys can see me. Um, one of the things I have girls do when they're on their own to kind of test to see if they're pushing or if they're tilting is I have them put their uh, camera up sideways and do okay. their pose do their pose here. My name is in the way. Let me move this so that you can see why my hips. I can't see my hips. I'm going lower. Okay, there we go. I so, can see your hips now. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're here, you should be tilting up with the glutes mm -hmm. versus pushing. Exactly. With the glutes. So here is just standing, just standing neutral, not doing anything, right? I'll move yep. my hands so you can see. And then a tilt up. That's right. That's wrong. Yep. Okay. And this is where you'll see people get the point of the body right here, right? Yep. So, and if you want to do some research on this, guys, just look up anterior and posterior pelvic tilting. Yes. And that is literally the pelvis and how it rotates on the hips. And if you think about a yoga wheel and what happens when you get into the yoga wheel, it puts you in that perfect position yes. for a back pose. That's not a push. That's an arch. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever questioning it, you're not sure if you're feeling it right or whatever, that's a, that's a way that you can test yourself, you know, videotape yourself from the side versus the front and back. That's a really great, that's a good tool. And see what you're doing. So yep. I'm giving you guys all my secrets today. Oh my goodness. I know. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Everybody, everybody should be listening to Behind the Bikini. Spreading the well. Yes. I feel like this one's going to be good. 
<laughs> this one right here. This one's this one's fun. <laughs> so this is the opposite of what we just mm -hmm. did. And in my yeah. opinion, this is when we see girls trying to find the um the lat spread but they're uh -huh. kind of overdoing it, right? So they have probably been told at this point that they were pinching and now they're trying to overcompensate and doing the shoulders forward, squeezing the chest, opening the elbows too wide. So yep. I call this the elbow flare or the chicken wings. And again, now my back looks open, right? I have the, the, the lats coming out. My waist now has that taper, but where do my eyes go to? It doesn't go to that. It's going to my arms. Yep. So some people have a really hard time with this. They have to chicken wing in order to open up the lats. So that's going to take practice. Yes. It takes practice of opening the lats and then slowly sliding those hands down while keeping the lats open until you find that spot that works best for you. But obviously yep. here you could see my hands, you could see my wrists, you could see my elbows flaring out. I am not paying at all attention to what I should be, which is the rear delts, the waist, and the glutes here. Yes. And I will also say like this is when I started getting back into posing again, this is how I started to get back into feeling my lats, right? Yeah. Um, so there's, there's always a progression. And if you look back at my photos from 2020, when I started working with Jamie, you can see I was doing this, you know, because I was trying to reconnect my brain to my body and it's okay to go through these steps. It's okay to work your way up, but just realizing that this is not the final goal. This shouldn't be what you see on stage, but it's okay to be like, okay, I know how to get this open. Now I know how to get my back open. It's like, okay, now I got to realize I got to figure out how to open my back and keep it open while I get my, my shoulders to come out. Right. Yeah. And it's so, hard. It is. It's not easy. It's not yeah. easy. And this is where I, I tell girls all the time too: training with somebody in the gym on your back days and things like that can 100% make this a thousand times better yeah. because, you know, I just made a post about this the other day. You know, you can't see your back. You have to feel it. It's all about feeling. Feeling. So if you can't, yeah. If you can't feel it, you're not going to be able to get it open. Nope. You know, absolutely. So, when I'm working with girls with posing, I give them exercises to do to start feeling what it feels like to open the back up and stretch it open and get the lats to work and things like that. Um, but there's only so much I can do as a posing coach. You've got to do those stretches on your own. And then if you're going into the gym and you're not replicating that in the gym, you're just erasing what you just did again. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's a constant thing where you have to be really mind muscle connection with the back. Opening the lats up like that is not easy. It's not easy at all. So going step by step, this is okay to start, right? We just don't want to end here. Correct. We just don't want to end here. This so, doesn't look cute. Like if you're looking at no. your posing routine and you see this, the judges are going to see that too. So if you go, oh, yes. I don't like that, well, then fix it, right? And yep. maybe this is where you need to bring a posing coach in because you don't know how to fix it or you know the lats are open, but you can't really get those arms down. You don't really know to go from there. That's okay. Ask for help because this yep. is a hard one, but it's right. really important as you can see. Yep. And again, like going back to you can't fix this in the mirror. You need to have somebody help you do it because you got to be able to, you got to be able to feel it. You got to be able it. to feel it. Right. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when you sent me these photos, I was laughing. This is one of them I was laughing at. Drew, Drew, so Drew, again, guys, we were supposed to record yesterday, but I needed another day because I wanted to put all these together. And Drew was hysterical. We were laughing for 30 minutes taking these poses. He's just like, oh my God, babe, like this looks terrible. But anyway, so this is also something I see way too much, way yeah. too much of. So number one, I want to talk about, we are in bodybuilding and yes, we are prancing around in thong bikinis up there, but it is a family sport. So yes. this, when you lean over like this, number one, it doesn't look right. And number two, you are risking exposing something that should not be shown on stage. Okay. So mm -hmm. where I think girls tend to do this is because again, they're trying to show glutes that they don't necessarily have. Okay. So ladies, or if you tie -ins. have the tissue and they're tie-ins, yes. Mm -hmm. If you have the tissue, you're going to tilt that pelvis up and you're going to be stage lean and the tissue is going to be there. You shouldn't have to push this hard in order to show your glutes. This right. also squares your glutes. And in bikini, they want to see roundness. They don't want to see mm -hmm. square glutes. And I know that's hard to tell for when I'm wearing pants, but it, it takes away the roundness and the bubbliness Fullness. of the shape. Also, when you have to think when your upper body is leaning away from the judging panel, you are now creating a disproportionate from top to bottom. So now my upper body looks too small and my glutes look too big. I'm posing my upper body away from the judging panel. So yep. again, 
just like the front pose in a back pose, the, the shoulders should be stacked directly over the hips and the glutes have that arch that are tucked behind you. Uh -huh. So again, I see this mostly when girls are trying to create a shape that's not necessarily there because they don't have the tissue or they're not lean enough and they're trying to show the tie-ins. Yes. I can promise you that if you talk to any top judge, they would rather you just stand up nice and tall the correct way and tilt the Ooh. pelvis up versus this. This is going to get uh, tossed off to the side immediately. Absolutely. Absolutely. All the things that you just said. And like you said, most of the time when a girl is doing this is because she's overcompensating. So she's overcompensating either not having enough glutes, trying to make them bigger or trying to make herself look leaner. One or the other. Usually it's leaner because what happens is girls get into the habit of posing like this in their off season. So they're like, well, I want to see my, my tie-ins. So I'm going to push a little harder. Well, guess what? Everybody has tie-ins when you bend over. So <laughs> just it is what it is. Uh, but it doesn't, it, it's again, going back to the overall shape. We talked about this with that, that front pose too. It's like that front pose where you're pushing and twisting all the way out. It's like, yeah, glutes look great, but that's all we see is glutes. Correct. You know, yep. so standing up tall and opening up um, is definitely the, 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 the way to go with this. And I don't, I, I think you did not do a correct one for the for the back pose, right? I Just don't think I did either. Just that. <laughs> That's okay. Because yeah. we've got we're gonna go through comparisons too. So yes. we've got some comparisons. We've got some good back poses. We'll show the we'll show the back poses in comparison. So was there anything else that you wanted to add with these individual poses or do we want nope. to move on to comparisons now? Nope, comparisons are good. And I love that Sean did the comparisons as well because there's so often times where an athlete looks great when they're individual and then they get really exposed when they're in the comparison round and they're standing next to someone. So it's just, it's just really um, important to be honest and realistic with yourself, you know, because you could feel like in your, in your hotel room that everything looked great and you love that shape. But then when you really pull up those comparison photos, so like on a show where you're like, I don't understand why I got third or I don't understand my placing pull up the comparisons and be real with yourself because you're probably going to see how you were exposed in some sort of way compared to those athletes that placed ahead of you. Absolutely. Which is what we're going to talk about right here. So this is Karen. This is one of my posing clients. Um, she knows I use her as an example a lot. Um, she's phenomenal. She's 62 years old. So that how old? 62. <laughs> yeah. She won her first, uh, pro show at 61 years old. So she won. This, she, yeah, she won the 16 over here. She came in second in the 55 and over. Um, I'm going to show you her individual photos. And then we're going to look at some comparison shots and things like that, too. So just like what you were just saying with her, um, you know, she she was telling she actually recorded the judges feedback and let me listen to it. And it didn't make sense to me. I was like, it doesn't that doesn't line up with what I'm seeing. Right. Cause this looks like a great front pose to me. Right. Yeah. She's one of the ones that for a long time had the issue of putting her weight on the back foot, things like that. So we've done a lot of adjusting with her poses to make sure she puts her weight on her front foot. She had a tendency to yank back with this, this uh, shoulder here. She did a lot of things that, um, that we talked about not doing. Um, and she's fixed a lot of that stuff. Right. Um, this is still not perfect, but it's still, it's a hell of a lot better than what she used to do. And I was like, I don't see, I don't see what the judge is saying. Like he, what he was saying was that she has a phenomenal back pose, but then when she turned to the front, her angles were off and it just didn't compute that she had such a great uh, back pose. And then her front pose didn't look as good. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, this front pose looks great. I don't know what he's talking about, right? So let's kind of go through her poses a little bit first. I'm going to go to a back pose so you can see her back pose. Um, and then we'll go to the comparison shots. And it wasn't until I went to the comparisons with her that I realized what the judge was saying with her. So this is one of my suits, by the way, too. So it just is an FYI. So I love, I love the pink on her. <laughs> it looks phenomenal on her. It was a great color choice for her. Um, and I was at the show and she was a standout. Like yes. I was, I was watching her, um, but then we'll look at the comparisons and let's get her to a back pose. She's got amazing stage presence and all that too. She does a phenomenal job with all that. She's come a long, long way with her posing and presentation, but you can see here, I mean, these are 62 year old glutes. I mean, come on, man. So she's got a fantastic back pose. Um, and great tie-ins, great roundness, standing up tall, all those kinds of things. The one thing she could fix here is we had a little less hair so we could see some more delts. You know, but other than that, the pose itself is great. So you look at this, and I'm like, and when I'm hearing this feedback, I'm like, I don't understand what the judge what this judge is saying, right? And I'm listening to it. She's not parroting it back to me. I'm listening to what he said. So she's like, Well, I, she's like, I think he might have been talking about my comparison. So I said, Oh, okay, well, let's take a look at your comparison shots. So let's pull those up. While you pull that up, I'm going to go pee. Sorry. <laughs> you, do, you do what you got to do. I'll bring up her comparisons. Okay. 
Um, and we're back. And we're back. <laughs> okay. So here's comparison shots. This is the 55 and over class. So you can see Karen is right here. So um, as I said, the, the judge's feedback was there were certain angles she, she hit in her front pose that just didn't compute. And he didn't understand what was going on. And she needs to, she needs to figure out um, some other angles for her front pose. So looking at this, automatically, I was like, oh, okay. You can see she's twisted off way too far to the side. This is the center of the stage right here, right? So this is where the head judge is. The camera is right where the head judge would be. She's twisted off to the side. As we go through this, it actually gets worse, right? You can't see her shape at all. She's covering up her glutes. She has no, no S curve. We just talked about this with all those front post errors, right? And meanwhile, you see all these girls over here, nice and open and wide. Mary uh, Abato is, is an amazing competitor herself. And, you know, this is a perfect pose, right? She looks phenomenal. And this girl right here, nice and wide and open, right? Karen is completely closed off. You know, yeah. we don't see anything, right? So I'm watching this. I'm clicking through on the comparison. She's just getting closed off more and more. She's rolling that shoulder forward, blocking the glutes. We can't see any shape down here, nothing, right? Um, so we just keep going through. Now we got your, these girls ended up placing the top three right here. Okay. And again, Karen is being outposed. She's absolutely being outposed. Right. And so we go through, we look at the back post here though. Karen's got a phenomenal round fullness in her glutes. She's beating this girl right here in her back pose, hands down, hands down beating her as far as the shape is concerned. But we start looking at how she's posing. This girl's 100% outposing Karen, 100% outposing her. Yeah, Even look at the Karen. waist, yes. no glue because of how she's posing. Yep. And you can see the fullness and roundness she's got in her shape is phenomenal, but she's not posing it correctly. And then we keep going. I said, you know, the biggest and best thing that happened to you is you got moved over to this side. <laughs> I was like, you know, because Better. now I was like, now you're a little bit more open. I said, you know, you're still being outposed. You're still being outposed. Um, but at least we can see a little bit more shape here. You know, we're starting to uncover that glute a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. So we're getting there. Her physique is better. Her posing is better. Hands down, her posing is better. I said, you got lucky, Karen, that, that you came in second here. I said, because you definitely got outposed. Here, she's even better. She's opening up a little bit more, right? She's opening up. We see a little bit more shape here. Got to keep her waistline in tight, but she's opening up a little bit more here. So this is a big thing, understanding where you are on stage and how you have to pose to show your best assets to the judge is a big, big deal. This is where the judging feedback was coming in. The judging feedback was coming in from her not posing correctly, right? Because you look at her from the back again, she's not fully posed here either, but you look at her from the back, she's got that roundness. She's got that pop. She's got that bubble, just like Mary does, right? She's, these are the only two here that have that real bubble in their glutes, right? So she won on her physique, but if it had come down to posing, she would have lost. So this is very, very, very important. Um, anything else you wanted to add to this particular uh, demo right here? No, I think you're going to go into it about um, like something that no, here to notice too is that one and two in this show are already hitting their pose. Oh. She's still getting into it, so you got to yeah. get to that pose. Well, she was she was top. third, she was third, but she was and she was second. But yeah, sorry, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go into that though. Yes. <laughs> you're right. Yes, just getting mm -hmm. into the pose as soon as possible. Correct. Yes, and you can see here, and I'm going to show this in another in another. Um, uh, angle to another competitor. I mean, Karen is the only one that's not in her pose. So again, she got outposed. She got outposed here. Um, everybody else is in their pose and set and she's not yet. Right. Okay. So this also, I think is probably a hair thing. I think what she was doing is she was trying to push her hair onto her back because I've, I've been a big stickler with her hair. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want her to wear this hair. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's just too big for stage. It's too big. It, it overwhelms her. She already has more mass on her lower body than she does on her upper half. So it actually covers up her upper half. So I've told her, I was like, you've got to push your hair onto your back so we can see your shoulders. And that's yeah. what she, she's doing here. And that's why she's not, that's why she's not posed. Mm. Right. So she, uh, we've already had that talk. She's going back to her, her straighter, like still curled, but not like overly curled hair for her next show. So I think I'm finally getting to her. <laughs> she saw it now. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Sometimes it's just people trying things out to see how yep. they go. I mean, sometimes I'm like, I can give you my best, my best advice, but you've got to put yourself up on stage at the end of the day. So, um, so there was that. And then we're going to pull up this one. 
So this one, what I wanted to show was this girl right here in this uh, purpley pink suit. Um, I don't know her. I don't know who she is, but um, she stuck out to me when I was clicking through these comparisons for a couple of reasons. Now, um, let's flip through to the next shot and the next one. Now, the reason why she stuck out to me in this shot is because she's the only one that's actually angling her back pose inward towards the head judge. Which All you the should rest do. Of them, correct. All the rest of them are straight. If you're on the ends here, you should be angling in. I always tell people to think of this lineup as being like a semicircle, not a line. It's a curve. It's a curved surface. If you think about those, um, those uh, diagonals in the back, the girls are on a curved diagonal in the back. This is a diagonal, or I'm sorry, a curved, a curved line as well. So you should never be straight across. If you're in the dead center, yes, straight on, absolutely. But as you move out, you should be slightly angled in, slightly more, slightly more, all the way out to the outside because you want to angle in towards that center judge. That's right. She's the only one here that's doing that. She's the only one here that's doing that. Um, and then also what we were just talking about with Karen, we look at everybody in their pose except for one girl right here. She's the only one that's not in her pose. Everybody else is already set. You don't want to be the last one that's not in your pose because here's the other thing too. When you look at her right here, her glutes don't look as full and round because she's not fully set into her pose and tilted and arched like all of the things we just talked about. She's got better glutes than what this picture is actually capturing. And if the picture got it, that means that, or if the photographer got it, that means that the judges got it too, right? Yeah, because you got to think if the rest of the girls are in the pose, they're already starting to judge there. That's right. You know, That's in right. human nature is you're going to go to the ones that are already set. And now if you're only in the pose now for 10 seconds versus the other girls that were there for 25, you yeah. lost out on an extra 15 seconds of them looking at you, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that is a lot in bikini time. It absolutely is. And when you've got, you know, like we've got the eight girls here on stage that are being compared, they're looking for somebody they can say, okay, not her. That's what they're doing. They're looking for somebody to say they can, they can look at them and say, not her. You know, this, as, a, as a posing coach, one of the things that I get from clients a lot is they're like, I want to put flair and sass into my, into my posing. When you're in these comparisons, it's business. It's all business. Yep. You can put the flair and the sass in your individual as long as it doesn't take away from your poses themselves. But here in your comparisons, you should be front pose, back pose, done. Like you need to be in, in, in because they don't care about flair in between. They don't care. No, do that in your individual. That. That's right. That's this right. is where they're trying to figure out who's actually winning today. Yes. So I go back to when we're looking at stuff like this, practicing your posing should be twofold. Practicing your posing should be your individual posing, but also your comparison posing. If you're not practicing your comparison posing, you are shooting yourself in the foot because this is where the judging happens. This is where the judging happens right here. So yep. If you don't know how to do this, you, you, there's no point in being on stage. You know, also, not holding the poses, right. holding mm -hmm. the poses at a national level, level, and on the pro level. I think the longest time that I was up on stage last year was the twelve minutes. Yeah, like in in a comparison round. Yep, twelve minutes. That's a really mm -hmm. long time to hold poses. Plus, you also have to think too in a larger national show or pro show, you are going to be off to the side mm -hmm. holding the poses in a class of 30, 40 women in a national show. Yep. So not only do you have to Absolutely. hold your pose on the side of the stage, which they're looking at you. They are 100% yep. looking at you. I've seen it several times this year at a nationals where they brought a girl in or even at the pro level where they accidentally overlooked them, saw them on the side stage and then brought them back into the first call out or the top of the second call out. So mm -hmm. it's really important to hold the longevity of the poses. I tell people to find online like a national show where Sandy is moving the girls in the comparison round from back, you know, side to side and identify with one of the girls and pretend yep. like that's you. And then listen to Sandy's voice and practice the, the holds and practice yep. the turnarounds because it's one thing to know your individual routine and it's another one to hold it and actually be able to hit the poses correctly for a long period of time. Yep. And if you think about that too, and that's exactly what I tell people to do as well, and also get into group classes in your area, you know, even if they're not your specific posing coach, even going to group classes can make a big difference. I did I that. So. When, yeah. When I, before I won my pro card, so I was a manager of a gym and I had a team that would come in and practice uh, every Saturday in the, in the group, uh, group exercise room. So they would let me come and pose with them. She never critiqued my poses, the, the coach. She never critiqued my poses, but I was able to go through quarter turns. I was able to do all that stuff with them and hold my poses with them. 
so that I was prepared. I was beyond prepared to get on stage when I went to national level and I ended up winning my pro card, yeah. you know? And again, she wasn't my posing coach and, and she knew that, but she was like, yeah, sure. You can come pose with us. No problem. You know? Yeah. So doing stuff like that is definitely very beneficial just because you get the feel for it. Um, and you get to, you get to feel what it feels like to be next to people. You get to feel what it feels like to hold it. And if that stuff's not available in your area, like you said, doing the, doing the videos, there's tons of videos online. I tell Rose to pick, you know, one of the pro shows and become one of the pros and just be that person. Cause you gotta think too, okay, let's say you were in a comparison for 12 minutes, right? Well, that means that the other pros on that stage were standing in their front pose for the 12 minutes. Yeah. And it <laughs> stinks because yeah. I'm B. So I'm toward the front of the stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have no forgiveness and I'm usually mm -hmm. on the front line at the front of the stage and it stinks. I yep. mean, it is triple the amount of time to hold that pose. So sometimes if a girl from the back line gets called out, I'll sneak to the back just so I can yeah. relax a little bit. But yeah, you have to practice the longevity of the poses because that's where you're going to get exposed as well. Again, they're yes. looking for an error. They're looking for a flaw to be like, okay, that girl's out. This one's now in. That's right. But don't let it be something you can control, which is posing. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and, and people will say, well, I'm, you know, I'm a local competitor. I'm not going to need, need to hold it for that long, blah, blah, blah. Okay. How many classes are you going to do? Most local competitors do three classes. Three classes. Show. Yep. Or more. But right. on average, on average, it's three classes. True so novice, novice yeah. open. So let's say you're out there for five minutes of class. Well, guess what? You're holding your poses for 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, all my first time competitors, they come off stage after, so they do their true novice, they're good. Then they go right into novice and they come off their stage. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. Why did you make me yeah. do this? I'm like, it's good. Yeah. You're learning. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Now we're for the other end. Like, got the jitter. And it's actually yeah. harder. Like, if you ever think about, like, so if you wear heels all day long, right? You, you wear your heels all day long, they hurt. They hurt, hurt, hurt. But then you take them off and you try to put them back on and they hurt 10 times worse. Ten worse. <laughs> so it's kind of the same thing when you're talking about posing. You go on stage, yeah, it hurts. But you come off stage, you release all the the, the, the lactic acid and everything, and then you go back out. It's harder that second yeah. time. Yeah. Like, oh man, this hurts even worse. Exactly. You know? I'm like, can so... I just stay on stage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just can I just holding. get this done? <laughs> can we just go? Just to judge well right now. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And that, going back to Karen, so this is a great way to tie that in as well because the reason why her individual was good and the comparisons were not is because they did comparisons first and they didn't do their individuals until final. So for for comparisons, because she was in 16 over, they brought them all out and they kept them there for 55. And right. they kept them there for 50. So she was out there for all three classes. So by the time she was going through those classes, she was out there for like 20 minutes. Yeah. And she was tired. And you see yeah. it. You see those comparison shots. shots. She was tired. Yeah. You know? And I was like, And they oh. were posing them at this show. This wasn't... Mm -hmm like a one and done, like they were posing them. Yeah. Yeah. They do it at every show. You see all the mm -hmm. time, even at, at CCTS. I mean, we weren't even judging on physiques and you guys held those girls up there so long. I was standing there. I'm like these four girls, but I love it at the same time. It was hard. It's a reality check. It's a yeah. reality check. I mean, they were all doing so good. Like we needed third and fourth looks. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were, for, I, I was timing it. I mean, we had, so we had figure wellness and then we had four bikini classes and the whole stage show took two hours. So that tells you how long those girls were on stage for. Yeah. You know, each class yeah. was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, depending on the number of girls in the class. I'm like, yeah. I'm watching my, I was watching my watch. I'm like, this is a long time. It's a long time. So yeah, I mean, it was At it least, was you know, we, we do, you know, we, we take a good look. We, we take yep. our job very seriously. It was a reality check, man. That's all, that's all it is. It was a reality check. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so things when it comes to posing, it, though it looks easy and it looks like, oh, these pictures, like it looks, looks like you're just standing there. You're not. Yeah. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of practice. And if you're not doing it in the off season, you're already shooting yourself in the foot. Get practicing in the off season. Do it now. Yeah. Work on your mobility now, you know, and then you can just, by the time you get to prep, then at that point, all you got to do is just tweak things. And then you just work. It's on, easier to on pose and prep. It's yes. easier when you have less body fat and things like yeah. that. Yeah, and you're just but refining it and like, all know, that. Oh, I stink at posing, and you know the pros make it look so easy. We all stink at posing. Mm -hmm. Like, let me, let, like that. Ninety nine percent of the time, people are not great posers unless you come from like a dance background or a gymnast background or something yeah. of that nature. Most of the time, we all stink at posing. We're bodybuilders. We like to get yeah. into the gym and lift Athletes. heavy things. Like, it's not about the finesse and things for us. That's 
that is the complicated part of the sport. And it is our job on the pro level to make it look easy and effortless. Right. But I could promise you it hurts just as much as yours does. Absolutely. We have just learned how to make it look effortless. Yes. You know, I talk about all the time the year 2020, you know, where I won the overall Tampa Pro and everybody else got their pro card besides me. I didn't deserve it that year because my posing sucked. Yeah. I didn't look like a pro at all. I did not deserve it that year. Part of being a pro is practicing the posing and practicing making it look professional, right? That's You're right. asking for a professional title. Um, yep. And that all just comes from practice. And in addition to that, your mobility, you know, people so often neglect mobility until in season comes. Yep. Off season is the time for mobility. When you're Absolutely. throwing, you have to think muscle hypertrophy, which is muscle growth is when you're literally in the gym, breaking that muscle fiber apart and it's sewing itself back together and it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. So if you're not working on mobility and you're not getting body work done, you're only going to get tighter within your posing practice. Right. Now yeah. is the time to be working on that. Not when you switch to in season, you're only yes. going to be making up for the things that you should have been doing in off season. And like you said, shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. And I go back to the men on this situation too. Like you see this now, like a lot of these bodybuilders are getting injuries all the time because they didn't focus on this stuff. Right. He's 50. I mean, he had injuries when he was competing. He really hasn't had a, had a problem since he's retired because no, he was one of the first guys. Yeah. He was one of the first guys to incorporate massage and all this kind of stuff, mobility work and everything into his daily routine. It made a difference. You yeah. know, he's probably, and like you said, he's probably one of the, one of the guys that's in the best shape right now, yeah. um, that is retired and things like that. And like the, it, it makes a difference long-term. It makes a difference. I noticed a huge difference. And one of the things I'm, so I had a great body work guy in Tampa, Matt, um, next level, um, next level conditioning, I think on Instagram, I'll have to put, get that for you guys. But anyway, he's fantastic. And I haven't found someone that great in Arizona yet. And I used to see yeah. Matt once a week. Yeah. My recovery right now is trash. Like yeah. my glutes cannot recover. And Drew and I were talking about it last night. He goes, Jordan, you have to realize you just went from getting body work done once a week, sometimes twice a week to you haven't had a good Nothing. body work done in six weeks. Yeah. I really since the Olympia. So right now I'm actually considering flying Matt out a couple times a month because I have so many people out here that would use him. But oh, yeah. all I'm saying is it, it makes a difference and you really don't notice until you start or stop something like this. Like right now you might feel like you're fine until you start getting mobility done more often. And it doesn't have to be every week. Maybe it's even once a month for you, but then you yep. start to see the difference and how much better your lifts are and your posing. And yep. now I'm seeing the opposite of it of how I don't recover as well and how tight I am and how crappy I feel from not having my body work done. Yep. So you don't realize the impact it's going to make until, until you do it or, or oh. not have it anymore. And I said that to my to Jamie in my check-ins last week because I've I've neglected posing on my left side. I, you know, I, I harp on posing on both sides all the time. And I've neglected my left side because I've just been hitting my right to get my check-ins done, boom, done, whatever. And I'm like, I'm noticing how tight I am over on my right side. I said, so I've got to make sure I'm still hitting my left all the time. i got to make sure that like when I'm doing my routine and going through it, that I end on my left side just as many times as I end on my right side. Because it does make a difference. And you start to feel like I was starting to feel it. I'm like, my whole right side is locked up. And I know that's why. Absolutely. You know, like we were talking about this. I was having pain over here. It's because I'm posing on my right side. And I'm not posing yeah. on my left. Yeah. So, you know, those, those things make a difference and just being aware of it is half the battle yes. <laughs> and then, and then doing the things that you need to do in order to make it better. That's, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that's it. So hopefully Absolutely. we make you aware of it here. <laughs> we make you very aware. But, yes. But I think that that's probably a good place to wrap it up. Is there anything else that you wanted to add to this that we missed? I think we got it. I think we got it. But any questions, it. feel free to put them down yep. in the comments. Feel free to put questions in. We got a lot of good questions last week. So maybe um, we'll go through those and kind of find a new topic for next week from some of the questions that came in. So Perfect. if you guys have questions that come in from, from posing or from anything, it doesn't have to be posing, type into the comments, send them to us on Instagram. I got a few that came into the DM, our DM on Behind the Bikini uh, Instagram and stuff too. So we got a few questions there. Um, so we have plenty of things that we can talk about. Um, and no, no question is stupid. You know, that's the other thing too. I realized like we've been in this industry for a while. I've been in it for 15 years, you know, and it's, it's sometimes you forget what newbies don't know. You know what I mean? So if you're brand new at this, there could be questions that we just aren't even thinking about, you know, because we've been doing this for so long. So exactly. there is no stupid question.
question. You know, there is no stupid question. So feel free to ask us whatever you'd like, and then we can build upon that for you. And um, and then we'll come back with with more. Hopefully, this was informative, more informative podcasts for you like this. So I liked this one. This is was fun for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's good to just be able to to um to bounce those things off each other too. Like you know what I mean? Like picking up little nuggets and things like that too. That's the other thing about about having like a brain trust of people. You know, we always, I've always said this, it's like, if, um, if everybody thinks the same, then one of you is not necessary. You know what I mean? So if we get some, some new, um, input, we can always learn from it. So definitely. Yeah. So with that, yeah. let's wrap it up for today and we'll come back again next week, but this was episode 23. Um, like comment, subscribe, comment your questions below. Get your CCTS 2025 Ticket. super early yes. tickets. <laughs> Throw that little plug in there. Do all the things in the comment box. (laughs) Right. Yes. Um, And uh, from 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 there, we'll we'll go from there. So yeah. See you guys next week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.